Hi guys, so today I have a new video sponsored by Tonic Studios to share with you guys. It is for their new designer's choice called uh, Hello Friend Frame. So I did send this item free of charge from my review and of course all opinions are my own. And any links that I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you were to purchase items through those links. And the designer's choice is not a club or anything like that. It's just something you'd pick up monthly when it comes out, if that's uh, what you would like to do. And, um, and it has a reduced shipping if you're just picking up the designer's choice, but if you're picking up anything else from the site, of course, the shipping is just the regular price shipping. And look at this, you guys. Oh, my goodness. So, again, hello, friend frame. So as I'm looking at it, we have... Quite a few things. So let's see. Over here we have the word hello with a larger outside kind of like um, background layer. Again, I always forget if they're called shadow layers background. I know there's different reasons why it wants a background as a shadow and, you know, just anyway. But <laughs> you can see there has a nice border. We have the letters hello for hello there. And then we have friend over here again with that outer uh, layer there. And then we have this one that's a little bit closer and it says lovely, like a nice script font. And best again with that uh, outer layer a cute little like just a little a little something like a little scroll work that you can just pop here and there um on this side we have this whole border and oh and there's an s <laughs> so let's hold on let me see um what this is here so as far as this guy's length it is um like five and a half inches long and at the largest width, it's almost two inches, like one and three quarter inches. And this guy is about five inches long and about three and a quarter inches wide. And so this one, again, it's a border. So we have this outer die that if you want to cut it out, just like on the border of a card, so that it has like a um, pretty kind of uh, edge. Or you use the other side and cut the edge on the other side, or you, know, you can turn this die however you like. And then you have the inlay, or again, to go along the border, or you cut it out together so you have a little strip that you can then just use on your projects that way. And then over here we have the word, I think it's a special. And then the outline die there. Outline, maybe that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, here we have like a little scallop edge and again it's like half an oval and then you, I guess, suppose you could flip it to the other side so it's a complete kind of scalloped oval if you want or you have again scallop and smooth or both smooths so, so you flip this over again and then we have an inlay for that one and inlay for this side although um, they're both scalloped so you know if you want that inlay to look like that it's scalloped on both um, sides or you just have it on the smooth side with a little scallop or you just pop it onto your card or wherever, whatever project you're working on and just have that inlay which is really pretty. So what I'm going to do is grab some papers and get right to it. And as far as this S, I'm just, I pointed that out, obviously it doesn't fit in with these things because they have their own outline, but let's say you just want to use the letters and now you have the letter S that can help you uh, write a bunch of more things, right? Because we have H-E-L-L-O, so you have those letters you can kind of play with. You have an S to add to friends or whatever other word you might be able to develop from the combination of these letters. So, all right, guys, I will be right back. To start this guy off, I have just a standard A2 size card base here. Again, A2 size would be eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter inches. <laughs> and that's what we have here. So I have this little piece of paisley paper I think would be really sweet. So what I want to do is make like a little kind of doily background and then we'll build off of that. So um, this I'm going to cut down to uh, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So I have a nice um, matte layer. And then for this guy, I have a piece of pearlescent paper that I'm just going to start. What I'm going to do is go ahead and do the inlay and this guy on one side and then I'll come back in and pair it up um, for the other side right so let's see here I just want to zoom in a little bit and find my tape okay so uh, you know what does this work over here you know I like to not waste my paper so actually this fits over here better and that way I can keep the other paper okay so and I'm just eyeballing where I want this to be I mean you can put them real close together um, giving a little shape if you want to make this into like a shaker I would give it a little more room so you can put some foam I think that'd be really fun because of all the little cutouts that the shaker will look really nice so I am sticking that down really well um, I'm not 100% sure how much obviously I need the same amount on this side but what I'm gonna do is just eyeball it for now <laughs> how much that might be I'll put this paper away for another day. 
Um, so I'll have the mat cut down. I'm going to run this through and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to remove this very carefully and show you. So again, if you just wanted this to be like a matte layer that, well, I guess I can take it off of this side so it stays together. And that'll kind of give us an idea of how, you know, if I pop this onto the other side, that'll be the same. Oh my gosh, look at that, guys. So pretty. Again, that can just be on the edge of whatever paper, you know, however you want to use that. I'm going to take a moment, though, to clean this out. You could always just move on, you know, give it a little tap tap and remove as much as you can. But whatever paper is still in there, sometimes it'll impede your cutting for the next time. So I'm going to take a moment and just clean this out and I'll be right back. And then on this side, all I'm going to do is line this up. You know, as best I can. I'm just going to see where the exact cut line is. Yeah, so it ends right at the edge. There's a little tiny piece that's not cutting. So I'm just going to place that there. And I don't know if you see how there's like a little divot. It kind of is on your paper too, that little divot mark that is on the die. So that's where I'm lining this up with. Okay. I don't know if that, I hope that makes sense. So on my paper, I can see that there's like that little mark and I'm just kind of lining these guys up together and that should help out. Okay. So I'm going to run this through and I'll be right back. So again, that little impression that that little divot gives, just line up your die on that on the paper and look, I don't know if you can see they're perfectly lined up from the time before. And I can see that side was already popped out. So if you see, you know, your tonic dies and they have something like that, generally they put things like that for a reason, right? <laughs> so um, in this case, it helps to help you line that up. And well, it's already coming off of here. Let me put this to the side and not misplace my die. So I have my big magnetic tonic mat right next to me and I just pop my dies on here as I go and I keep it flat um, I know it's meant to um, it has like an easel property to it so you can pop it up but I keep it flat right here just next to me and I just pop my dies on there so I don't misplace my dies and on this one I had a little bit off so I'm just going to take that little piece of uh, paper off there okay so we have our card base again and then we have our cut here I'm going to place this one on here and then we're going to do something with uh, probably the words. So let me see. Let's do... That fits on there perfectly. Well, they both do, obviously. But um, I think what we'll do is cut best and friends. Let me pick out some papers that I'll do that with, and I'll be right back. Okay, so keep the kind of dainty feel, like with our doily and everything. And I think what I'm going to do is cut out um, best friend. And so on this part, this outline... <laughs> I am going to um, cut it from the pearled silver vellum paper. So just you know, roll those through. And then the word best, I'm going to cut from some of that same uh, pearlescent white paper that I used there. So I'm going to take the word best and cut that out. Again, I always keep my scraps, especially while I'm still working on the project. Cut that one out. And then um, the letters friend. The letters, friend, that sounds kind of funny, but the friend letters, <laughs> I'll cut from Princess Pink pearlescent card and bring that pink back up. So I think that's really cute. So, um, oh, I didn't even notice this. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, when you cut them out, they're going to be loose, but these are not individual. They're all stuck together. So that's um, actually really fun because if, let's say you want to make like a shaker or something, right? And you pop these words in here. You don't have to... Um, eyeball where you're going to put them and everything. It's just going to cut it. Those letters are going to be cut from here and then you can make it into a shaker or whatever it is. So I really like that. How come I didn't notice that? <laughs> That's very sneaky. I didn't notice these little pieces of metal here. Anyway, okay. So I'm going to run those through and I'll be right back. My pieces here. I'm going to layer these guys up. So very carefully. You can see this is very sweet and delicate. Look at that. Uh, let's see if this glue is ready to go. Just putting a little glue on the back of my hand for this guy. And the other one, there's lots of different ways. I'm going to eyeball it, but if you feel like that's not your best option, what um, else you can do, I'll talk about that in just a minute. Like with this guy, we're just going to put him on here. So we have that layered up. So cute. Bring it down a little bit here. Look at that, so sweet with that little best. And then on this one, 
I have my letters here and <laughs> this is so cool. So that's kind of what I was saying, like if you wanted to just do that. And then you can even paper piece back into it. So let's say you wanted these letters cut in here, then you can piece it in a different color or however you want to do it. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm trying to think what's the smartest way. So like I said, I was just gonna eyeball this. Let me pop these out. Especially because I have the um, vellum piece, but if I wasn't using the vellum, and actually, <laughs> I could have just left them in here the way they were, put some glue on them. They were pretty much all in there, and then just turn it over, pop them on here, right? And then pop them out just like I did, but I did not do that. Um, you can also use this to help you. If you line it up really well, you can just paper piece those pieces back in. Or like I'm going to do is just eyeball it. So <laughs> I'm just going to take some glue, put it on the back of my little pieces, and just kind of eyeball where those should go. And I'm just going to go down the line like that. Okay, and I'll be right back. card base back. What I was showing you there is what I did is I put my F down and then uh, when I went to the R I was like you know maybe I should use this as a stencil like a, as a guide basically. So I popped it back on there and I just made sure from the back that it looked you know straight and then all I did was turn over put a little glue pop in my letter glue letter glue letter and I think that works pretty great. <laughs> of course it wants to click in like a puzzle though so just uh, there it is. And so I glued down my um, matte layer and then this guy, all I did was take some dimensional adhesives, just like the little scraps, you know, that are left behind after you pop out the circles, <laughs> if that's what you're using. And I'm going to pop this on here just so it has some dimension. And, you know, and of course I'm just eyeballing this, but I'm looking at left to right, up and down. And then we have these beautiful little pieces. So I have friend, it's super delicate, really sweet. And then the word best. I don't know if I was gonna put it up here, here. Either way, I'm gonna glue this down at the bottom, or at centered, should I say. And since this is vellum, I'm going to just try to put the glue behind my letters so it doesn't show through too much. So I'll take a moment just to do that. And I will let that set up for a minute and then we'll pop on our best. Okay, so I think I'm going to add this up here like this. And again, just being careful with my glue. I'm not going to put too, too much. Just a little bit here and there where I think it's going to touch the surface the most. And yeah, I'm going to put it right up here. So we have a little best friend. I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit since I put so little glue. You just want to make sure it's really making contact. But look at that. So sweet and just really feminine, you know, with the whole doily in the back and just that vellum. It makes it really soft, the little paisley kind of background there. Love it. And then uh, just to finish it off, I did grab some um, vintage drops, some new vintage drops. So these dry kind of like a, like a matte. Uh, generally I take my pictures as soon as I'm done so the pictures they might look shiny but it does dry with a matte finish so I'm going to use this because I haven't used these in a while I think it'll be really pretty uh, so I just tested it out just to make sure I don't have like air bubble or anything like that that might uh, do something funny here uh, and I think I'll go here and I'm gonna squeeze for a little while make a large drop again I'm not right touching the paper you're kind of up in the air a little bit and then I'm gonna squeeze for a little bit less make a smaller drop and it's just because I like mine to be a little bit different but if you really think about it you say okay I squeeze that one for two seconds I'm gonna squeeze the next one for two seconds if they want it the same and just something like that and a little bit less on that one so I have three different sizes and sometimes people like to tap their cards on the back to flatten that out or to make it a little more rounded and that's what I have there and I'll do the same thing kind of over here 
And let me see where do I want to put it. Do, 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 if that's like there, maybe here. So a little bit larger. A little bit smaller. Oh, <laughs> you heard that little air bubble. And I just finished it off anyway. And then one there. Something like that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, thank you so much, Tonic Studios, for sponsoring this video. Again, this is the, des the new designer's choice. And, I mean, you know, I was looking at this. Even this little piece, if you cut it, like, in a different color, maybe gold, and tucked it behind. Look how cute. You can see that it would just kind of scroll out the edges. So many ways to play with this one. Um, I'm really, I really love this Hello and the Friend, and especially that they're stuck together, because if you want to make a shaker, you can pop that on any, you know, card base, you know, or topper, and then just uh, shake her around it, right? Really cool. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I also have the step-by-step, -step, I believe, this month for this set, so there'll be another idea there for you guys to check out. So um, definitely check that out there on Tonic's blog, and I'll see you guys at the next one. So images are coming up. Links in the description box, and bye now.